Good morning, uh, Friday. Uh, so I hope you have a good day today. I know I will. I've got plans um, for a birthday lunch, and so I'm excited about that. But, um, you know, I pulled out my book yesterday on Wilby, and um, so I looked at it again this morning, and, it, you know, it's a goofy book. It is a, I can admit it's a goofy book, but uh, the Lord just kept putting all these thoughts into my head. But uh, my um, publisher, um, she wrote, I wrote something on the back. I had somebody write something on the back, and this publisher helped me too. But I'm going to read you the last sentence of the back of the book. You know, it's supposed to tell you the whole book. It says, when God calls Willoughby and Wendy to experience an up-close and almost too personal glimpse in the hidden life of the bee world, both college kids realize saving the bees might mean saving the world. And that's how this book went. They all they were they want they had totally different thoughts in their lives. They were on separate paths. They were going in their own direction, and God just sort of put them both together and said, "This is what I want you to do." And so they, in obedience, they did do that. But they, the Lord is always showing me how the honeybees represent life, and how we should really study the honeybees and see how they. They're social, you know, they take care of one another. They work together. They don't fight, you know, And but their whole purpose is to feed the world. That's their purpose because they pollinate and they, and, and it says if they weren't for honeybees, we would all, the human race would be dead in four years. And so um, I, I have to use that as a metaphor to uh, saving souls too. You know, we need to keep, going out there and feeding the world and feeding the world and pollinating, dropping the seeds, you know, and gathering the honey and and um, spreading it from from flower to flower, you know, and that's our goal in life is to save the, of course, that's God's problem, <laughs> but he uses, as he uses the honeybees, he uses us, we're honeybees. If you can, get, you know, understand that, I don't know, but um, that's the lesson he has taught me over and over and over and over again. And so I'm in Psalm 103, and I'm going to read this to you because I love it. It says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And so even the honey represents, you know, it satisfies our mouth. It's the sweetness. It's the metaphor also. But I'm listening to this guy, and I don't even know. His name is Kim Clement. I guess a lot of you might know him, but I've just heard of him. I don't listen to him much. But anyway, he said something I thought was pretty profound. And, you know, uh, whether it was profound or not, it just witnessed to me. And that is when after Christ died on the cross... And there were two men on the road, what they call the road to Emmaus. They had given up, you know, their their, their leader, who they thought was going to save them, was dead. And, um, and all of a sudden, this man came up from behind him, and he said, Why are you so sad? And they looked at him like he was crazy. They said, Don't you know what's going on? You know, we, we thought Jesus was going to be our king and, and all this stuff, and now he's dead. And, and um, so what what they didn't know that they were talking to Jesus. He had, he was already resurrected, you know. And so, of course, I don't want to go about the whole story, but Jesus went home to them and they broke bread and all of a sudden their eyes were open. But what Clement was saying is that because of the no hope, because they had given up, they didn't recognize the Lord. It wasn't because he had shielded himself and maybe, I don't know that, but this was his thought and I, and I grew I think that's pretty profound that um, because they had no hope, if we go around with no hope, we go around in fear and anger and bitterness and whatever, we don't see Jesus. And he's right in front of us. He's right next to us. He's walking with us. And, and we don't see him because we're, we're thinking all is lost. You know, we're looking at the politics and the world and, you know, God's got this world. I don't know who's going to win or lose or whatever, but Jesus is always going to win. He's always going to win. So um, then the other hope is, 
uh, of course, what Clement was saying is go to Matthew 6, 9, you know, and it says, um, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So um, look at the world as, you know, heaven on earth. And let's look through our God eyes and see what God's doing. And um, so I'm over here in Isaiah 11 also, because this is a hope. It says, a wolf also shall dwell with a lamb. Then the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. You know, one of the things that bother I can't even watch TV and some of these nature movies, you know, where the lions are chasing after, you know, the gazelles or the deer or whatever, you know, and, and for food. And uh, you see them fighting. You see the, the males of the, even the elephants all fight, you know, and stuff. But I always hate the prey, the predators that are, but you know, they, the animals eat the animals, you know, but I can't even. Another reason why I don't even like to eat meat, you know, I just, and so I look here and I see the Lord, you know, and I see that the wolf is going to dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with it. There's going to be no uh, animosity, no fighting, no, you know, gory stuff in heaven. It's just going to be so good. And so we have to have hope. We have to keep the hope and, um, and trust in Jesus and in, in everything, you know. And uh, I was going to tell you one more thing, but it slipped my mind. And uh, I'm going to go again to Isaiah 11, 8. Maybe it'll come back to me. Isaiah 11, 8. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. Nope, I'm going to go back to 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I love you guys. And Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see you later. Bye.